Welcome to Beyond Days of the Reef. I'm Kim, and for this week's episode of Fishy Friday, we're going to be learning what's so special about the category of fish that we call the bony fishes, and what kinds of bony fish we can find here in Santa Barbara. But before we start, let me tell you about my first encounter with fish. When I was a kid, my dad would take me fishing in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. He would catch all these brown trout, brook trout, and rainbow trout in the creeks and lakes. You might be thinking, is there any way all these trout are related to the fish in Santa Barbara? It turns out they really aren't too different from most of the fish we find in the ocean. In fact, all of these trout are in the same category of fish as swordfish, clownfish, and most other species of fish in the ocean. This is the category of bony fishes. Last week, we learned in Sam's video about the two main types of fish, bony fish and cartilaginous fish. If you can't remember what those mean, a bony fish's body is full of bones, while a cartilaginous fish, like a shark, has a body made up of cartilage. However, these aren't the only differences between bony and cartilaginous fishes. Cartilaginous fishes are really only found in the ocean, but bony fishes can be found in seawater, like this Moorish idol on the left, and in freshwater, like the trout I saw in the mountains, and my own betta fish pictured here. Let's take a closer look at some features that are unique to bony fishes. One thing I always wondered about fish is how they can stay afloat even when they're not swimming. Swimming all the time would take up a lot of energy. It turns out bony fishes have this figured out. Bony fishes have an air-filled structure in their bodies called a swim bladder or also an air bladder. The function of the swim bladder is to help a fish stay afloat in the water. You can think about it like a balloon. When it's full of air, the fish will float higher in the water towards the surface. When the fish lets out the air, it will sink deeper in the water towards the bottom. So that's how my fish can get his food on the surface, even with his tiny little pectoral fins. Another thing I always wondered was how scientists could figure out just how old a fish is. It turns out that bony fishes make this question very easy to answer. They have little structures inside their ears called otoliths. Their function is to help a fish with its hearing and balance. But for scientists, otoliths have another special function. Every year, a new ring forms around the otolith, so you can count a fish's age just like a tree. So how do you tell whether a fish is a bony fish? Let's take a look at some animals we might find off the coast or in the reef. This is a California moray eel which lives in kelp forests. Do you think it's a bony fish? It is a bony fish. Moray eels have a spine that is made up of calcified bone. How about this bat ray, which you might find in beaches around Santa Barbara? It is actually not a bony fish. Just like sharks, rays don't have a bony skeleton. Instead, it's made of cartilage. What about Clyde, our stars and stripes pufferfish that we have in the tropical tank at the reef? Clyde, in fact, is a bony fish. Actually, all of the tropical fish we have at the reef are bony fishes. You still might be wondering what other kinds of fish we might find off the coast. In part two, we'll take a swim around the Santa Barbara Channel and see what bony fishes we can find. Best fishes, and see you soon!